everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Liz, if you're new here, I do everything DIY and crafting related on this channel. So I wanted to tell you guys, I am going to start a new little series on my channel. I'm gonna call it Workshop Wednesday. I know that's super original, but I had so many people reach out to me and say that they needed Cricut tutorials and how to's and how to make things on their Cricut, whether that be designing on Design Space or anything else. So I decided every Wednesday is going to be a kind of how to video teaching you things about Cricut, whether that be teaching you things that I made and sold to make money during the pandemic, things like that to help you along with Cricut and those sort of things. So in this first video, I am gonna do a design space tutorial. I took a little poll over on my YouTube channel. The majority of people said that they needed help with design space, just a beginner friendly tutorial on how to use design space and how to design things. So I'm gonna start off there, just teaching you all the basics of design space. So first, before you get started, make sure that you plug your machine in, read through that manual and go through those first couple steps that it's gonna walk you through on setting your Cricut up. It's super, super easy, just read those instructions instructions in your little booklet. And then once you've done that, let's go ahead and jump into Design Space. So when you first pull up Cricut Design Space, this is your home page. This is what it's going to look like. If you haven't ever signed into Cricut Design Space before and you're new, this will just be completely blank. These are all of my past projects. I can go through and look at them. And then I also have the option to view all right there. So when you're starting a new project, all you have to do is click on new project and this is what your design space page is going to look like now typically I think that when you first start it's going to look like this you can change the grid by clicking this little square box right here the grid can be nice if you're trying to get things perfectly aligned I like to be able to see my project just with a flat white background so that's just my personal preference so you can just click this square and change the different grids depending on your preference. So I'm just going to start by going through all the tools and exactly what each button does so that you can get a better idea of how you can make designs in Design Space. So I'm just going to start with this left side right here. This is the new button. If you click on that, you're gonna go to a new project. This is the templates button. Now what I think is really cool about this is this allows you to visualize your projects better when you're creating a design. For example, if I come right up here into the search bar and type in shirt, I can choose several different kind of shirts. I'm gonna go ahead and click the scoop neck t-shirts. And it's going to bring up a template of a t-shirt. Now what's cool about this is it's going to allow you to visualize your design and allow you to fit it better to the shirt so you know what sizes to make them. So for example, if I wanted to add an image onto this shirt, I'm going to come over here to images. Let's type in something about family. I Just some random, random thing. Let's see love makes a family so let's insert that image and now i can click and drag this so i can get a better idea of how this design is going to look on a t-shirt so that's all that the template does just giving you a better idea of how your project is going to look on this specific item that you are adding that design onto to delete this all you're going to have to do is come down here click on scoop neck t-shirts and then come over here and press delete. So if you come over here to projects, this is going to be so many different projects that the Cricut Access members have access to. Anything with this green A right here means that it's for Cricut Access members, which you do have to sign up for their monthly subscription. It's $9.99 a month. I am subscribed to it. And if you're gonna be using your Cricut a lot, especially for like a business, I would definitely recommend getting it. That is what I use. I just feel like it makes my life so much easier having that Cricut Access membership rather than me trying to go out and find every little tiny shape or design that I need. So for example, in here, you can obviously search projects. So for example, I could type in Valentine's Day cards and it's going to pop up with so many different kind of Valentine's Day things or ideas. Now there are gonna be things 
that don't have the Cricut Access. For example, this one doesn't have the Cricut Access, so anybody can use this. That one is free. So you'll just have to kind of go through and find which ones don't have that so that you can use them. So for example, if I go on here and click this and click customize, it's going to insert this project into my design space. So you have all the layers over on your right hand side. The other nice thing is when you click on a project to do, and if you scroll down, it's going to give you all the information that you need. So this, in a, this is an advanced design. It's going to take you one to two hours. It's going to tell you the size that it's going to be, and then it's going to give you all the materials that you are going to need to make this card. And then it's going to give you some prep some cut instructions and assemble instructions and then there's also a little handbook right there for you to follow so it's going to give you all the instructions on what to do so if you're not a big fan of making your own designs in the project section there's going to be plenty of designs for you to just make yourself that other people have created now if we go over here to images i love this because i can find really anything that I need right here. So when you click on images, you're gonna have all these different categories. You're gonna have your highlighted categories, which have featured recently added free this week and image sets. You have your themes, your people and places, occasions, shapes, and trending. So if I came over here to the home, which is under themes, and I click on that, it's going to bring up a whole bunch of different designs for me to use in my project. Now, again, same thing like before, if it has the green A, that means that you do have to have a Cricut Access subscription. You can also search images. So let's say I wanted to search for a heart. I would just type that in and then it would pull up a whole bunch of different hearts. Now, if you look over at the left hand side, you can go through and filter to what heart that you want or what image that you want. If it's for a card, a phrase, 3D, what operation you're gonna do, if you're gonna cut only, draw, only print then cut and it's just going to filter through all of those for you so there's really I mean you can do absolutely anything with searching right here you can type in a word so I typed in farmhouse it comes up with a whole bunch of different words that say farmhouse or kind of farmhouse related things so that is what images is if you need to find some sort of image, just click on it, type what you need, and then find the one you want. If I wanted to insert an image into my project, all I would have to do is click what I'd like, and then it's gonna appear down here, and then you're gonna click insert image, and it's going to show up in your design space. And then you can obviously make it bigger or smaller, and we'll get into all the sort of different things that you can do to those in just a bit. Now, the next one down is going to be your text option, and this is going to allow you to type things out. So when you click on text, it's going to have a text box appear right here, and this is where you're gonna type everything in. So let's say I wanted to say, welcome to our home. And here it is right here. Now, if I want to change the font, all I'm gonna do is come up here to font, click on that, and you are going to have all of your fonts in here. Again, same thing like before, if it has the green A, that means it is for the subscription. And unless you have that subscription, you can't use those. But if you come right here to the top, if you have all selected, that means you have all the fonts that Cricut has in here, plus all the fonts that you have already downloaded onto your computer. Now, if you aren't a Cricut Access member and you want to just see your fonts, you're gonna come over here to System, and these are gonna be all the fonts that you already have downloaded to your computer. So let's say you buy fonts from designbundles.com. All of those fonts are gonna show up right here, so they'll be easy to find. And then you can click on Cricut, which is just going to be the Cricut fonts, Cricut Access. So I'm just going to use my system fonts right here. So I'll just scroll through and find a font that I like. And let's do this one. I always think this one is fun. So I'm just gonna click on my font 
And you'll notice here that the O isn't attached to the M. So a way for you to fix that, there's a couple different ways. You can come over here to letter space and start hitting that down arrow. And that is going to start smooshing all your letters closer together. But when I have F font like this, where really only the O's need to be attached to the next letter, I like to come over here to ungroup. I'll click that and that'll make it so that I can move each letter individually and they're not all attached to each other. So what I will do is just highlight the E and the M and drag it on over until that O and M attach to each other. Now this is when the grid comes in handy so you can click that box right there. So if that helps you get it straighter, you can have that grid there. I mostly just eyeball it until I get it how I want it. I don't ever worry too much about it. So I'm just going to move this O a little bit closer till the end of that O and the U are connected. And then I will do the same thing over here. I'll highlight the M and the E and then drag those over till the O and the M are connected. And you can kind of mess with the space of all the letters that way. So if I wanted these all just a little bit closer, I can move them. And then to reattach everything, now when you have two letters that are touching like this, you want to weld them together. Or else your Cricut is going to individually cut this O into this M and it, you'll see the cut right there. They won't be attached. So if you want it all in one piece so that it comes down and cuts like this and like this and goes down instead of cutting around where the end of that O is, you're just going to highlight this and you're going to click weld. And that's going to weld it all together so that you don't have any of those lines in there. So again, I'm just going to highlight this and click weld. And the same for this one, highlight it and click weld. Honestly, you don't need to weld them all individually. You could just highlight them all if it's exactly how you want it and click weld and that'll make it into one welded piece. One tip and thing to remember, if you do click on weld, there is no unweld. If I highlight this, it does not say unweld. So the only way to undo that is to click your undo button right here and then obviously if you've gone too far, you're not going to be able to undo everything. So when you're welding, it's a good idea to make sure that you have it exactly the way that you want it before you weld it. So I'm just going to highlight all of this and click weld. Now a couple other things to mention when dealing with fonts or really anything. You have the font size right here that you can enter or you can just resize it by clicking this arrow on this side. If you want to have a little bit more control over how big or small it is, you can come over here to this lock. You can unlock it and then you're able to drag it down, make it wider, make it taller, really whatever kind of direction you want to go with it. It's not stuck in just the same spot. You can manipulate it that way and then just lock it back into place. Or you can come up here to the width and the height and you can type in different numbers in here to change the size of it. There's so many different ways that you can do it, so it's all really just dependent on your preference. Now let's say you want these words stacked, you would just double click on your words and your text box is gonna come back up. And then instead of just writing it all out, you can click enter, 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 just like this. And then for example, if you wanted them all in the middle, you could click alignment, center and then all of your words are going to be aligned in the center. Let's say you want these words closer together. You are going to go to your line space, click the down button and you your words will start smishing together a little bit more and you're just going to click that until you like it how it is. So yeah, that's really all there is to with your words. You got your fonts. You can change the style if you want it bold italic really 
however you want it to look like. All pretty easy and basic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that and we can move on to shapes. So here is your shapes button right here. You have your square, circle, triangle, you have, you know, all the kind of shapes that you would need. So one thing that I like to do with using shapes is if I'm making a sign, I like to come over here to square. I'll click on that and then I will measure my square out to the size of the inside of my sign. So not including the frame. So let's say I'm making a 10 by 10 sized sign and I have a one inch frame around it. I need an eight inch square. I'll make it white so that it's easier for me to see the words that I'm gonna put on it. So to do that, you're just gonna come up right here to this box and click on that just click on white or you can change it to whatever kind of color that you want it to be. I'm going to have it say love lives here but I want some of the text to be in different fonts. So I'm going to individually type these words out so they are their own layer. So now I have three different words that I can move around on their own. I'm just going to click and drag it over to the box and I can start changing the fonts. So I've got the fonts that I want. Now again, with your cursive letters, they do not come attached to each other. They are all separated like this. So like I said before, you can either go to your letter space and start pressing the down button. With cursive, I like doing this just because it seems a little bit easier. <laughs> and if you need to see a little bit closer, you're just going to click your zoom in buttons down here. So I can't, I like just pressing those buttons until I get them exactly where I want them. If there's not a way to do that, I'll just come up to ungroup and then I'll individually click on the letter, click and drag and just move those around till I got them about where I want them. And then to weld them together, I'll just highlight all of the letters and click weld down here in this right hand corner. So now that becomes one piece and I can move it over there. Now a couple other different tools that I really like to use. If you want certain things to be aligned or spaced out, what you can do is click and drag all of your layers right here. There's going to be this align button that you can click on and it's going to allow you to align everything a certain way, however you want it. So if I click this align left, everything is going to be aligned to the left side. If I click center horizontally, everything is going to be centered horizontally. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, if your love lives here words aren't attached to each other, and let's say I clicked center, so it should all be right in the middle, they're all gonna jumble right to the middle. So what I like to do is have my words spaced out the way that I want them first. You can move the box and then just drag those. And what I like to do is click distribute vertically and that's going to distribute those letters with the space that's in between them. So all the space in between each word is the same. Now, once I've got those where I want them to be, I'm gonna come over here and click attach. It's gonna keep those words all attached together. You can also click on the group button, but when you're cutting it out, it's easier to click attach so that your design is all cut out exactly like this. So now I can click my square and bring it right back over here. To be able to visualize your sign a little bit better, for me at least, is to see it inside the square to see exactly what it's gonna look like. So let me show you how I can size this by seeing how it looks right in the center. So let's say I have it like this and I need to get my love lives here exactly in the center of that square. I'm just going to click and drag over those two layers and I'm gonna click align and then center. Now this is perfectly centered right in the middle of my square and I can make adjustments where I need it to. If I needed to make it a little bit longer, I would just click this unlock button and then just drag it this way. And then again, I would just 
highlight those two layers, click align, and then center. So that's why I like the align button. It helps me get everything exactly where I need it to be. If I need it aligned a certain way, to the left, to the right, top to bottom, really. There's so many different ways that you can use it, but that's just an example of one way that I like to use it. Now, the last button over here is upload. Let's say that there is a design that you want to upload into your Cricut Design Space. You are going to click that upload button and you are going to come right here and click upload image. You have your drag and drop file here or you can browse. And this is going to show you all the types of files that you can use for your Cricut Design Space. You'll click on browse. You'll find the image that you want to use from your computer. So let's say you've purchased some designs from Etsy or from designbundles.com. You can upload those files to your Cricut Design Space to use in here. So I just found a file and clicked on it and it's going to upload it into my Cricut Design Space. So this is what it's going to look like when you're starting to upload it. You can name it whatever you'd like. I just have the title name Farm Fresh Eggs and tags. This is what's going to pop up when you're typing in your images and trying to find a certain image. So I'm just going to say eggs farm so when I type in eggs and farm into my images section over here this will pop up I'm going to click save and then this will pop up right here so I'm just going to click on that and insert image and there you have it there is your design right here now this did come in multiple different layers so this is an SVG file if you are uploading a PNG file that is going to be all in one layer you're not going to be able to do anything with the different kind of layers in there so when uploading a png this is what it's going to look like so here is my farm fresh eggs picked daily i'm going to go into a simple image so it'll say select image type select the option that best matches the complexity of your image this is a pretty simple image so i'm just going to click simple and continue and then to get all of the white space out from this design if i click preview right here you'll see it's just a big blank square that's definitely not what you want so all you have to do is start clicking on the white images that need to not be a part of your image and this is going to take those away and you're just going to go through the entire thing until all of the white space is gone between your letters and anywhere else so then when you click preview you can check it oh you can see i missed that p right there so i'm just going to click the white space right there i'll click preview again to check it and it all looks good i'll hit continue now you'll want to make sure that you save this as a cut image so you'll click on that and then same thing you'll name it add your tags click save and then it will pop up right there. All you have to do is click it and insert image and size it down so that you can actually see it. And there is your other image. So that is two ways that you can upload your images that you already have downloaded on your computer. Let's say I wanted to make these designs. I would just come over here to make it. It's going to sort my designs into different mats. Now you can see here the file that was an SVG that was in multiple different layers. It was not attached, which is why it is looking this way. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And then to attach it, I'm just going to click and drag over the entire image. Click attach make it and you can see that now my designs are the exact way that they should be it is all right there in a perfect design and you can see this other one is all the way that it needs to be as well all you have to do is click continue and then you will just insert your vinyl and you're good to go and that's it for today's video so this was just the basics for the Cricut design space if you're needing any more help in any sort of different areas on how to do certain things let me know in the comments down below and I can make a dedicated video to that once you click that make it button it's going to walk you step by step on the screen of your computer or your phone on exactly what you need to do to put your vinyl on the mat insert your mat into the Cricut 
press your load button, press your go button. It will walk you through all those steps right there and making sure that you have the right settings down for the material that you're using. It's so, so easy. I know so many people have been really intimidated by the Cricut and they're not sure exactly where to start. A lot of you still have it in the box. Just get it out and try it once. And once you try it that one time, I promise you'll be hooked and you'll become a pro in no time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you have any other questions or any other things that you need answered or for me to walk you through, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!